This is ContactTalkRadio.com. Consciousness in action. And you are taking action into your consciousness by tuning into Contact Talk Radio. And on TuneIn.com, Ying.fm, and Upsnap Mobile. Contact Talk Radio. Long ago, before this day's confusion did begin. Throughout the stars did we go wandering Distance was no barrier And time it had no hope Free to go to Karmic Evolutions, Astrologically Speaking. I'm your host, Sherry Horn Hassan of Karmic Evolution Astrology, coming to you on January 28th, 2021 from Contact Talk Radio. Just a quick reminder that this show aims to bring you the truth about astrology and your soul's karmic evolution. Today, my guest is professional evolutionary astrologer Daniel Fiverson, who I will, of course, be introducing properly in just a few minutes. First, the usual housekeeping stuff. You can find my posts. You can find um, my weekly blogs and my lunation posts on my Facebook page, Karmic Evolution for Your Soul. And you can also sign up for my new and full moon conversations about consciousness email newsletter there. Just scroll down on the left-hand side till you hit join email list, and there you go. Also, if you've missed any past shows, want to re-listen to one, catch up, um, just go to my website at karmicevolution.com, hit uh, hit the uh, click on the upper right-hand banner that says radio show and scroll down and you'll find all of the past recordings there. And finally, if you'd like to gain greater consciousness about your soul's true mission in this lifetime, move from chaos to clarity in your relationships, career, finances, the area of health, heal old karmic wounds and co-create your own future happiness and success, or awaken to your true potential and highest destiny in this lifetime, that can be easy if you take advantage of my special discounted offer for listeners, a one-hour karmic evolution natal insight reading for only $99. Simple, simply email me, that's uh, at Sherry, that's S-H-E-R-I, at karmicevolution.com, and book your reading today. At almost half the regular price, conscious awareness has never been so easy or so affordable. All right, so let's get to this week's astro news you can use. Today's Leo full moon, which is actually occurring exactly at 11.16 a.m. Pacific time and 2.16 p.m. Eastern time, so within the next 13 minutes or so, um, occurs at 9 degrees and 6 minutes of the Leo Aquarius polarity. Um, As I said, 11.16 Pacific and 2.16 p.m. Eastern. Um, And this lunation, if we sum it all up, asks us to release our attachments to friends, family, and groups that do not allow us to be our true, authentic, creative, individual selves. So we've been seeing this energy brewing in the collective for some time, but particularly since the lead up to the karmic transiting nodal axis, the south node in Sag and the north node in Gemini in the sky, as it approached a mutable square to transiting Neptune in Pisces, which actually perfected Anytime between January 6th and 26th, which was just two days ago, um, because it depends on whether you use the mean node or the true node in your calculations. I did explain the difference between these two these two uh, methodologies of determining where the nodes are in the sky at any given moment a few shows back. So feel free to go back and listen if you'd like. But regardless, 
we've all witnessed the confusion, illusion, and delusion that's taken hold of a good part of the collective since at least early last fall, leading up to the U.S. presidential election, November 3rd and following. Remember also that from September through November of 2020, Mars was retrograde in Aries, asking us to take our battles inward to fight our inner demons or dragons, which are usually known as our shadow side. So Mars is the warrior god who asks us to, he, during his retrograde, he asked us to confront that of which we are most afraid, which is why we repress it and that's how it becomes our shadow to begin with. So while the nodes were waxing toward their square to Neptune, which is when an aspect energy is strongest, the collective shadow became apparent. At least we can agree, I think, on that in hindsight, as the bamboozling of many, and not just in the U.S., but also abroad, um, uh, you know, not just dealing with um, domestic issues here, but also with issues in other nations and parts of the world. Um, people were bamboozled into believing here that the election was somehow rigged. The, there were also, you know, a huge amount during that point in time and before about misinformation and disinformation about the coronavirus. Um, and that, I know, extended to foreign, um, foreign citizens and people elsewhere as well, since it touched it's touching everyone. The U.S. election, I realize, is a little bit more of a myopic way to look at things, but, you know, that's where we are. I mean, I'm here, so that's where I go. But, um, but the coronavirus is a big topic also. So the lies were per promoted, both, both situations, the election and the, the state and status of the coronavirus, where we were at in terms of vaccination development, where we're at in terms of testing, you know, all that stuff. And now, of course, where we are in terms of being able to actually get the vaccination. So the lies were promoted from the top as the heavy hitter trio of Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto in tightly controlling Capricorn banded together for most of that time. So to put it mildly, and I know, I, I assume, I don't have to tell anybody listening, that people became allied with one camp or another based on, again, misinformation, disinformation, and outright lies about both the virus and prevention and vaccines, et cetera, et cetera, about election flaws, um, some of which do exist, to be sure, but not to the extent that they affected the election's ultimate outcome. So Mars didn't station direct again in Aries until November 13th a good 10 days after the November 3rd election here, and probably, if I'm not mistaken, around the time that the vaccinations either went to the FDA for their approval or were approved, the first uh, one, now I forgot, Moderna and, um, and Pfizer, right? Um, so it may pay for us now to look back at that retrograde period which began on September 9th, so September 9th through November 13th, to see if and where we might have bought into some kind of big lie, either propagated by another or others, or through our own tendency towards self-deceit, and or where we did manage to slay that dragon before it got to that point. Hence, we can see on a more conscious and logical level the split occurring then between those who not only brought into, bought into the delusionary propagandistic, you know, BS um, all over the internet, never mind in local circles, but between those who remained less conscious of their own tendency to be so easily swayed by non-factual information, and by that I mean propaganda. So when Mars stationed direct again mid-November, but still in Aries, the warrior guard who neglected to go inward on the path toward greater consciousness allowed some of us to remain stuck in the world of ego battles. And that caused many to choose which army they wanted to sign up and fight with. So we end up at today's Leo full moon being asked to reconsider and potentially sever our relationship to the individuals, be they family, friends, co-workers, et cetera, or groups, be they also family, friends, or in particular, religiously or politically or socially allied, 
particularly with a, a cause, who don't treat us as the creative, solar, divinely inspired, unique, inspirational creatures we are and we came here to be. Now, there's a host of aspects formed at this full moon, but basically the Leo moon teams up tightly with the asteroid goddess of feminine healing, Hygieia, to oppose the tightly conjunct pair of Sun, Jupiter, and Aquarius, with Saturn just a little bit behind, but part of this group's energy as well. And Jupiter and Aquarius, um, which you know we've talked about before, Jupiter and Aquarius wants to expand group consciousness. And the sun in Aquarius wants to rule over groups, particularly legislatively, as it's Uranus ruled Aquarius that's connected to the 11th house in the natural chart. So in other words, in our individual charts, the ruler is, Aquar is Uranus of the 11th house, and then we superimpose the ruler of our natal chart over that. But Uranian ruled 11th house is always part of our energy, at least the way that I do charts. So meanwhile, Saturn in Aquarius wants to implement a stronger foundation. Saturn's always about, you know, um, uh, making sure the foundation is strong so we can build something concrete and manifestable. So Saturn wants to implement a stronger foundation within existing groups when he's in Aquarius or to begin a new group that has, you know, rules. Um, now, we can't fail to have noticed also the shift in alliances since Jupiter and Saturn conjoined to start a new 20-year cycle in the air element on December 21st of 2020. And I believe that's why we're seeing the split presided over by the nodal square of Neptune begin to emerge in projected shadow form by those in the collective who now want to move from one group to another. For example, the battle within the US GOP is a perfect case in point right now. Prior to that, we had the battle during the election between the Democrats who were progressive and those who were more center oriented or whatever. So, you know, it was the things were forming then. And now they're starting to take greater shape, showing us through the collective how these energies are beginning to manifest. We then, of course, can filter them down into our own particular lives to see where they make sense for us. And um, Venus meets Pluto in Capricorn today, also January 28th. And we may be subjected now to potential coercion and manipulation from outside forces. So this in turn may make it difficult to honor thyself in ways that allow us to differentiate ourselves due to pressures from our family, friends, other group associations, or society at large. Now, remember, Venus conjunct Pluto, this kind of energy can prove immensely empowering, too. Whenever Pluto's involved, we're talking about power. So the question is always whether we are empowered or disempowered. And when Venus meets Pluto, she's talking about values. Do your values empower you? Or are they adapted or adopted from some other group, because the lunations in, in Leo to Aquarius, that whose, whose actual values you may discover upon further investigation, you don't actually agree. All right, so this is an opportunity to go deep because it provides us with the strength of character to do that and to embrace wholeheartedly a to thine own self be true philosophy now. But to do this, we must examine where we give up or away our power and how we can learn to maintain it to become truly self-empowered over the long run. And this in turn jibes again with the message of the Leo full moon to release attachments to those who might not value us and therefore treat us as inferior less than, unequal, undeserving, or without the same respect due to all humans everywhere, regardless of their race, color, gender, religion, political affiliation, yada, yada, yada. So um, after that, on January 30th, Mercury stations retrograde at 26 degrees, 27 minutes of Aquarius, which, is, which will last until he reaches once again 11 degrees, five minutes as he's moving backwards 
of this fixed air sign on February 20th. So I'll have much more to say about Mercury's retrograde when I take a deep dive into this period um, on next week's show. So stay tuned. And uh, I'll discuss it briefly with my guest today also and get his take on it. But suffice it to say that Mercury's beginning its backward swims this year in the air element. And this shifts us away from 2020's retrograde, Mercury retrograde concentration on water which asked us to review the emotional quality of our lives. And we're moving now into the more objectively rational and logical consideration of the state of how we relate to others, especially in our primary relationships. Now, I've written a lot more detail about the intention of this Leo full moon and a little bit more about Mercury's retrograde and air now in... um, on a Facebook post that I mentioned before and in my newsletter. So again, you can check it all out at Karmic Evolution for Your Soul on Facebook or shoot me an email at sherry at karmicevolution.com to be added to my newsletter. I can send you this this last issue if you're not already signed up. Um, Now, in addition to these oppositions at this Leo full moon, which is, let's see, just occurred, I think. Yep, it's 216, exactly. The the, the lunation is exact. Yay, ring a bell. Um, So in addition to these oppositions between uh, the the Leo-Hygeia conjunction, right? And Hygeia, as I said before, is the female asteroid goddess of healing. She was revered by the Greeks. They built temples to her. She's the daughter of Asclepius, known as the father of modern medicine, who was taught the uh, art of healing by Chiron himself. So she, um, if you see my newsletter, there's a glorious picture of her by um, Gustav Klimt, or you can look it up online. It's just amazing Um, with uh, with her looking regal with the snakes uh, entwined around her arms. Temples were built to her and people went to them to heal. And some of them were filled with snakes, which were thought, you know, in ancient Greece to have um, tremendous healing properties. And some of that I think is because of the fact that the sh- the snake sheds its skin and therefore transforms itself. So the idea of transformation, much like that inherent in the archetype of Scorpio and Pluto, is also associated with this kind of healing. But now what happens is there's the opposition between Leo, Moon, and Hygeia. Moon in mundane astrology is the public. Hygieia, just to boil it all down, is health, right? So the public and their health are pitted against the Aquarius Sun, Jupiter, Saturn energy. And these, and, you know, still with Saturn involved, it's still, you know, well, not, no, I don't think so, all right? So we may, you know, we're seeing, again, Venus can be money, Pluto is always wealth, Saturn is like, I don't think so, I'm going to stick to my ideologies in Aquarius, Um, And the sun, Jupiter, is the ruler who wants to maybe expand, you know, uh, um, ways to help people and to help people heal and to prevent them from getting sick so that we don't have to help them heal. Now, I, you know, have to put the energy into it because they'll still, the preventative measures will allow them to stay healthy. But this energy also forms a T-square to the Mars-Uranus conjunction in Taurus. Now, bear in mind, however, that Mars squared Jupiter already on January 23rd. So this energy is is waned, while the Sun, or Aquarius Sun, already squared Uranus on January 26th, two days ago. But that the Sun doesn't perfect its fixed square to Mars until February 1st, which here is next Monday. So this means one of the strongest energies at play during this Leo full moon and between now and February 1st, may well revolve around conflict. Mars is an egoic planet. He wants what he wants, and he wants it now. In Taurus, he's a bit more muted, but he's not really happy about having to move slowly or cautiously, which in and of itself can cause additional frustration. Meanwhile, the sun asks Aquarius Sun asks us to be a bit more objective, logical, rational, and to talk about it, especially with Mercury starting to retrograde in the sign. So 
These two energies will be at odds with each other until early next week. On a collective level, anger and frustration over the feeling that things are moving too slowly, or in some cases that they're moving too fast, may result in aggressive actions against authority figures. On a personal level, it will benefit us all to pick our battles wisely right now and to focus our energies on some kind of hard work as this energy waxes, be it physical or mental. Repressed, frustrated energies can result in illness or accidents. So engaging in physical work or exercise is a good idea as long as we're conscious of not overdoing because that in and of itself can also lead to accidents, right? So it's a very much, and I wrote this in my blog, it, there's a lot of stop-go energy right now, you know? Um, and that, I think, is because the squares um, of Mars and Uranus to the lunation's opposition um, is in Taurus. And so, again, it's like, let's do this. Well, maybe not. Okay, no, you know, here's another idea. Oh, all right. Well, you know, I've started to notice just before showtime that I think there's also, and this may, you know, you guys can and figure this out as we go, there's a feeling of spontaneity, right? So we're not going to go out and do crazy stuff, but but it's sort of like, huh, I think I'll call so-and-so. I haven't talked to him in a long time. Is this a relationship I value? You know, on the cusp of Mercury turning retrograde, because it's already been in its shadow since it hit 15 of, um, or 11, I guess it was, until it hit 11 um, Aquarius, you know, a little while ago, that, you know, we may find ourselves wanting to contact or recontact people we haven't spoken with in a while, or we get calls or messages from people that uh, want to reach out to us. Um, and Aquarius, you know, is an energy where um, you can take long breaks in relationships and still have the confidence if it's a solid, trusting relationship with good communication and respect between two people that the other person will always be there. They'll be like, hey, hi. Oh, so sorry I didn't call you on your birthday. Yeah, that's okay. How are you? I'm just excited to hear from you. You know, that kind of attitude is where um, Aquarius lives, really. Um, but also on February 1st, in conjunction with um, the square of the sun to Mars, we have Venus entering Aquarius. And so this, the, the scenario I just described is one where Venus movement into Aquarius may also help Mercury retrograde in this same sign between now and February 25th, which is when Venus moves on into Pisces, to broker conversations that don't end up in screaming or yelling, but rather in the more rational, objective understanding of another's point of view. It's possible, too, <laughs> that the sun square to Mars earlier that day may result in arguments, but the purpose would be to, to let us release our frustrations and then later calm down and have the argument result in much calmer conversations during which progress to understand each other's points of view can be made and you know oh lord wouldn't that be nice <laughs> so there's more and i could go on and on and on and on and on but i am going to stop now um so that i give my guests some time to actually speak as well and i'm going to introduce him now evolutionary astrologer daniel fiverson also an author, lecturer, teacher, and intuitive, lives in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and has been a metaphysical practitioner and student of astrology, I Ching, and tarot since the conjunction of Uranus and Pluto in the mid-1960s. His reading of, astrolo of astrology skips formulaic astrological cookbook interpretations and focuses instead on the examination of the birth chart as a means excuse me, to discover the actual context of how a particular life has unfolded and why certain events have occurred. Daniel's readings draw upon his ability to intuitively understand the core archetypes of your birth chart within the context of your life and how they mirror how your life has unfolded with an emphasis on why. In addition to his core evolutionary astrological training through Jeffrey Wolf Green and his JWG School of Evolutionary Astrology, Daniel's work incorporates mythology and astronomy as well. 
His other influences include astrologers Rose Marcus, Patricia Walsh, Kim Marie Weinmer, Mark Jones, and Jason Holly, with whom he studied for five years. The writings of Liz Green, Howard Sassportis, Rick Tarnas, Brian Clark, and Demetra George helped round out his psychological, I'm sorry, his astrological perspective. Instrumental in the formation of the local NCGR chapter in Santa Fe, New Mexico, Daniel helps produce regular astrology events to support astrological education and awareness in his community and online. He's been published in numerous astrological journals and websites, including the Santa Fe New Mexican. In addition, he teaches online in local classes and workshops and conducts private consultations by both internet and phone. You can hear him speak about evolutionary astrology on Santa Fe Public Radio regularly. Actively committed to the development of the re-emerging online New Age communities during the 1980s and the sharing of these ancient sciences in the new virtual world of cyberspace, Daniel functioned as a CompuServe SciSop. During this time, he met, studied with, and facilitated workshops with a diverse range of authors, Native American elders, intuitives, lucid dreamers, UFOologists, shamans, Wiccans, Seth readers, tarot readers, and of course, other astrologers. He and his partner, Susan Waller, produced holistic healing fairs in Santa Fe, bringing together a diverse collection of metaphysical practitioners with seekers in his local community. He's participated in long-term study groups that revolve around the work of the Seth material author, Jane Roberts, and the work and practice of George Gudroff as well. When not ch casting charts, Daniel enjoys organic gardening, cooking up herbal and min mineral remedies, rock hounding, hiking, and biking the trails of the Four Corners region. The father of two wonderful children, Daniel is also an award-winning photographer and initiate, initiate of Surat in general Shabad Yoga, a practice in the Santma tradition of the Radha Swami Society, and a retired IT professional. He's also the creator and host for the Astrology for Healing Giving event. Um, oh, no, I'm sorry. That's not you. <laughs> that, that was left over from last week's uh, <laughs> guest. Sorry. So that, that, ends, that ends Daniel's very um, full um, bio. And now it's my pleasure to welcome Daniel back to the show. How are you today, Daniel? I'm, I'm great, Sherry. Thank, thank you for having me. It's wonderful to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you back. Um, I'm wondering if we could start with my asking you if you'd like to many, make any comments about today's Leo full moon and how that energy you know, may play out over the next two weeks collectively and or personally, uh, especially given the Mars-Uranus involvement in this lunation's energies. Um, absolutely. You know, you, you've covered it so thoroughly. I'm, I'm kind of struggling here to see if I can find any blanks to, to fill in that you missed. And there, there weren't a whole lot of them. Um, but I'll, I'll kind of go through it. Um, to me, this the, the Leo full moon the, today really is exposing issues regarding our, our relationship to the collective. Um, it's how, how do we fit in authentically, you know, in, into the group outside of ourselves, you know, in the world around us. And mm -hmm. The, the core issues that are swirling around all the things we're going to talk about today, because, you know, it's not just the full moon. We've got we've got the Saturn Uranus square um, <clears throat> and we've got the Mercury retrograde. And, you know, the same outer planet um, uh, dynamics really saturate this entire week. Um, so it, 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 they're spread out and they've, they, they've also been ongoing. Um, so, you know, these core issues are, are, like you said, they're about illusions and disillusionment. And it's about our personal authenticity. We, it, if we if we look at you know we look at any of these charts, it's not just a, a T square. We've got a grand cross with with Neptune and Ceres opposite Vesta. And you know we'll come back to that. You know Vesta is our sacred commitment to ourselves, and and it's 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 all deeply embedded in everything that's happening to us and to the world right now. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And and it's funny. Know, it's funny. I've had two clients this past week who came to me who both have very similar, they don't know each other, but they have similar um, issues. And when I you know, looked at this lunation on a more personal level through their lenses, it was about breaking away from family. 
And so I thought that was really interesting because I, I thought it was a reminder to me, actually, of how Aquarius energy doesn't have to be with some sort of, um, you know, faceless group. Uh, the group can actually be a lot closer to home. So, you know. It's well, let's just let's 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 you know. I'll, I'll pause here for a minute and just kind of talk about Uranus and Aquarius. Um, Uranus, yes, is rebellion and it's independence and it's the individuation process. Uh, but it, it Uranus performs two really important uh, dynamics. It interrupts and it disrupts us. It's it's you know Aquarius is the uh, sign that follows Capricorn. In Capricorn, things get crystallized. You know that form and structure gets created. The, the foundation that you talked about, everything gets set, gets set in place, but it's an earth sign. It turns to stone. It turns to crystal. It's hardened, and it's very difficult for it to change. So mm -hmm. Uranus performs the the, uh, the 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 principle of coming along and shattering that crystallization, so that something else can you know it can exist in its place. Uh, we we can't change when when we're totally crystallized. And if we look at our outer world, both Donald Trump and COVID are performing exactly that function. That's what they're doing to us. They're shaking us up. They're 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 uh, making us really, you know, with Uranus and, and Taurus, they're really making us uh, boil it all down to uh, what really is essential in our lives. Uh, but clearly, the individuation state affects everything. And I think that all of us, as we grow and individuate have to grow past our, our parents, past the conditioning. We're, we're, we're like onions. We have layers of conditioning that we are born with. Uh, you know, besides the, you know, the, the past life uh, karmic PTSD that we carry in with us, we, we, we have our gender, we have the region we were born with, we, we have the, you know, the religious values that we were taught, we have what our peer group has taught us, uh, layers and layers of conditioning, and none of it belongs to us. They're all things that we've picked up along the way. And, and as we evolve, we one by one strip off these outer layers to get down to our core self again. And I think this is what you're describing. So it could be family, it could be friends, it be, could be groups who, we ha who we've hung out with. And, you know, I, I had a, a teacher many years ago and he said, you know, we become who we hang out with. If you hang out with saints, you become, you know, a saint, you become right. so who's spiritually directed. If you hang out with thieves and liars, uh, that's the direction you're gonna go. So right, at right. some point we recognize that, that the groups that we're part of no longer serve us because they're not really who we are. They're something we've latched onto in order to, to, to f formulate, you know, piece by piece our own identity, but you know, it, it, it doesn't work for us anymore. Yeah, no, and I think I think you know the fact that Uranus has been transiting through Taurus is exactly to your point, because right. as I said before, Venus ruled Taurus is about values, right. so change in values and and hence, like I said, in the near term, the change, the the realignment. I said this last week on the show. I'm pretty sure, but um, I was fascinated by the sudden realignment um, after the attack on the Capitol, right? So like you said, things that don't change, the change becomes force. And, um, and how the corporations suddenly became uh, the, the dominant forces to make the decision when, when a lot of people on the left have been decrying how much power corporations have because they can give so much money to uh, political candidates or people in office, all of a sudden they decided to withhold money. And at the same time, social media, you can't get more Aquarian than that, right? Or Uranian than that, the internet, they decided to self-police. So I was like, here's the shifting of the foundations through Saturn and Aquarius, you know? And it was just fascinating. But anyway, um, I, uh, let me ask you now, just, you know, uh, if you have any insights, I mean, you and I both know that Mercury retrograde periods have all these standard precautions. And 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 honestly, I just I don't even want to get into it. I can't imagine that people haven't heard them already. You don't sign contracts and, you know, you might not hear from people for a while. And people will misunderstand you and your emails will go astray and the snail mail will go to China and maybe make it back to you at some point, you know, whatever. Um, misunderstandings. But do you have any other insights for us uh, about the Mercury retrograde cycles in air that are starting this week? Yeah, I I just want to say something about Venus first. Yes, you know Venus is Venus is all about relationship. She rules two signs in, in her 
outer, in her outer um, young expression, she's Libra, and it's our relationship with other people, with everybody else. Mm -hmm. um, but in, in Taurus, it's our relationship with ourself. It's our self-worth. And that's the determinant of all of our other relationships. It's how we feel about ourselves. That's the law of attraction. That's, you know, Venus is magnetism astrologically. And mm -hmm. so it's, what, it's, it's, it's the core of what we're going to attract in terms of people, circumstances, events, money, you name it. Every, everything that comes to us in one way or another is determined by Venus. Um, so, you know, with Venus moving through Aquarius, again, we're going to have, uh, we're going to encounter personal and collective circumstances where those relationships are shaken, where they're disturbed, where they're somehow interrupted in order for us to recognize the imbalances uh, that are there that are causing the shadows that are attracting the negative stuff rather than attracting what it is that our heart really, really, it, it's all about self-realization. All of these things that are, are, are just one uh, event after another towards, towards self-realization to, for the planet, for our country, and for us individually. Yeah, okay. no, that's an excellent point. You bring up another point that I touched on, but that I think bears repeating, which is at this particular Leo full moon, which asks us to take a look at our friends and our groups, which we discussed, whether it's family or, you know, our religious affiliation or political or whatever, and to see how, wh how much we are either valued or devalued by them. And right. your point about Venus, you know, being Venus and Taurus being about how we value ourselves at the same time, like I said, Venus go starts to go through Aquarius just after, um, um, Mercury starts to retrograde through Aquarius, right? The, the other thing, you know, that, that these themes become similar because we're taking a look or a deep dive into our, you know, how we relate to each other. Do we accept that people treat us like we're not very creative when we, you know, we, we all are, you know? I mean, it's just, you know, you're at the wrong crowd, like you said, with the friendships, right? If people are not proud of you for what you've accomplished or what you do or say, then you know it's going to affect one's self-esteem. Or, uh, or, or if somebody who's who's a teacher or somebody who you respect says you're not good enough to do that, you you immediately buy into it for the most part, and and you may go through the next twelve year twelve you know the next entire Jupiter cycle believing that about yourself until something comes up. Um, the Native Americans call it a, a, a coyote lesson where you you get slapped upside the head and you you realize wait no that's not true. But we, but, but we, but we have to go through those crises. You know, we grow through crisis, and and Uranus is what creates those crises, and, and of course, so does Pluto. Um, right. So, so let, let me let me let me jump to, to your Mercury question. Well, yeah, but let me introduce one other thing because you and I always have good good conversations. If we yeah, don't get to all of the planned questions, I don't go, think go, you know. Go for it. Go for well, it. Yeah. I just yeah because you're an EA, you know, evolutionary astrologer. Um, much of that is where I learned to interpret Uranus and Aquarius as trauma signatures. Exactly. So I'm just going to throw that in for you and say, if you, you know, if you want to make any remarks about that vis-a-vis -vis Mercury retrograde in Aquarius, that'd be cool. Um, well, you know, Mercury is our, is our narratives. It's the stories we tell ourselves and the stories we tell others. And the stories that we tell ourselves have much more significance and impact than what we tell to other people. Because we believe our own, you know, uh, BS, and and so we so we get stuck in the, these this a track, you know, mind loop of of who we are and who we think we are and and what we think we're able to do. So when Mercury goes retrograde, it gives us the ability, you know, especially in in Aquarius, it gives us the ability to really delve into that to see what you know what the heck is going on and. And, and to determine what is true and what's just some mental process um, that, that really has been overlaid on us, maybe by somebody else, or that we, we adopted because it was safe, or, you know, there's lots of reasons, you know, psychologically that we fall into our shadow, um, and we, which really, really is more the moon than, than Mercury. Uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's like... Uh, we we it, it, it we we want to be safe. We want to feel secure. We want to feel you know that we have some kind of sanctuary and and that that our our uh, default emotional nature is where we go to find that. Even when even when it doesn't work for us very well, we still go there anyway because it's known. 
uh, and it's mm -hmm. a known pain. We, we don't want to change because uh, what's out there is scarier than, than the pain that we already know about. Mm -hmm. um, but we, the, but the, the Mercury retrograde is going to bring opportunities to re revise and reframe how we've, how we've perceived the past, um, as well as the opportunities to reimagine the future. And we're going to have opp opportunities to reassess what we perceive as absolute truth and what is subjective truth. And, and this is, you know, this is Mercury's, because uh, uh, Mercury's going to square the nodes as, as, as uh, uh, no, it's not going to square the nodes, so take that back. But, but there are, he's, it's going to, no, it's going to try, and, so, yeah, no? it's, going to, it's going to try in the north node, excuse me, I'm looking at my notes here. And, and well, it so, already has, and it'll retry and, and sextile, right? Right, right. So it, yeah. it's, those are opportunities. And, and that's going to give us the ability to rethink both, both past and future, which, which is really what the nodes are carrying on, you know, on their backs. Um, and, but the crisis can be a powerful catalyst for bringing more conscious awareness to our own narratives and to our opinions and to our personal beliefs. Um, it, it, we're, we're, we're moving through some very, very turbulent uh, but powerful waters that, that you know, we're, we're swimming in one direction, but, but there, there are riptides here and we're being carried somewhere which, where we might not have gone on our own. And we're, we're safe, even though we're being perhaps feeling like we're being carried out to sea. Um, we, we just have to, you know, let go and surrender and accept. These are, these are all, you know, Neptune, uh, Neptune um, principles. I spent, you know, Neptune has been squaring the nodes now for months. And, right. it's, and, and like you said, it's peaking right now. Uh, we're, we're moving through it. This is a, we're moving through a period in, 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 you know, astrologically that hasn't happened since the days before the Civil War. Um, it, it, we're, we're moving through a time where the polarity in our country is, is phenomenally active and phenomenally, not only poignant, um, but painful. And, you know, it, it didn't just start with all these planets in Capricorn. We, we, we're, bringing, we, we're bringing into this time uh, things that have, we have learned or, or um, come to recognize or realize over decades. And, and now it's all coming to, to a point where um, it, it's all, it, it's all uh, you know, out in the open. It, it's no longer this, this kind of nebulous field of ideas and beliefs. Um, it's becoming very defined and very, very focused. And um, it, when things become this focused, it's like holding, you know, it's like holding a, a magnifying glass up to the sun. Uh, things start to burn. So it's interesting, yeah, that you mentioned because I'm thinking while you're talking that um, I pointed this out in my my blog and my newsletter, but I I didn't talk about it, um, you know, today earlier. But that Aquarius. Um, is a sign that once it begins to individuate, is that's when it becomes rebellious, right? So it doesn't start off rebellious. It usually wants to be part of groups, unless, of course, those of us who were born with frictional aspects between Uranus and other planets come in feeling shunned or, you know, not appreciated by the group or whatever. But the vast majority of people who don't have frictional aspects and a Uranian, I, we all have Uranus somewhere in our chart, or you know Aquarius planets, we come in having difficulty separating from the group. So once we begin to individuate, we begin to separate, and that's when the uh, rebellion comes in. But the other side of Aquarius energy is that we do so because we define our own beliefs as different from those of the group, like you said, all those onion layers of conditioning, right? But the danger with Uranian and Aquarian energy is that we overthrow one way of thinking and replace it with a new way, but ultimately that new way becomes metastasized or uh, hardened into an ideology. So the Aquarius energy is very much connected with overthrowing the old ideology, replacing it with a new one that eventually turns into an old one and needs to be overthrown. And with that, what I want to do is move on to a question about these upcoming, um, so we have about 10 minutes left, um, your take on the upcoming fixed squares of Saturn, Aquarius to Uranus and Taurus, which we sort of touched on. Um, I'd love to hear how you look at that on a collective level and then also maybe on a personal level for people, how that might play out. 
All right. Well, let, let's remember. In addition to what you've already said, because you do give some voice, you know, I think you just gave some voice to that, too. Yes. Oh, and, you know, we, we have to remember that prior to 1781, Saturn was the ruler of Aquarius. And there, 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 there is a dynamic about Aquarius that there's a percentage of people with dominant Uranus in their chart who are not radical, who are not progressive. They are reactionary. And we're seeing that in the GOP. It's Saturn. Um, they, 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 want, they want things to change, but they want things to go back to the way it used to be. Um, right. and, and this and this is this is the push pull. This is the struggle that we're that we're, you know, the, the, the dynamic that we're all, you know, caught in. It's like it's like that Chinese finger finger puzzle where the harder you pull at it, the tighter it gets. Mm -hmm. um, so it, we, we have to remember that there is that that component to to Saturn. And we're going to see that as, as well, Sherry, as these Aquarian energies uh, uh, unfold. The GOP is already regrouping. They're already backing away from, you know, OK, so they, Trump is gone, but they're not they're not deserting the party. And the, the po politicians are, a, are, you know, a, a very unique set of individuals because their primary motivation is to stay in, the, in, in an office. Um, stay in the game. I was going to say that's an understatement. <laughs> right, right, right. So, you know. And we also have to remember that for, for you know, 250 years of American history, we, we were all born in a bubble. Um, the, the history of our country has, has very seldom been progressive. It's been more reactionary. It's been driven by financial concerns, by economics, not by uh, idealism at all. Um, it took, you know, uh, 50 years that, you know, the Constitution, you know, it, it was flawed, you know, in, by it, their opinion that it was flawed at its outset. Uh, the Constitution was written to protect property, it was never written to protect individual rights. And it's taken the Bill of Rights and, and you know, 19 or 20 amendments to begin to expand uh, the, the, the power of, 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 you know, the legislature, this power of, of the legal system to actually protect people and not things. Um, mm -hmm. And we're still and we're still dealing with that. We're, you know, the, we, the, we're, we're still dealing with slavery. Slavery didn't go away. It just became segregation. Uh, we, and all of these things are all, you know, raising their head right now. And, and this is what we're dealing with. We're, we're dealing with, with, with things that the South know that, that is just emerging through this Neptune square that is overwhelming us. It's almost as if we're, we're downstream from the outflow of, 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 of a, you know, a sanitation plant. Of, you know, it, 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 we have all this, this, to <laughs> this toxic waste. Hey, I grew up on Staten Island near the yeah. biggest yeah. landfill in the world at one point. Well, yeah, New Jersey, <laughs> sure. I, 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 I lived in New Jersey too. You couldn't walk on the beach. You're afraid you'd step yeah. on a hypodermic needle. So. <laughs> Yeah, right. Uh, yep. Right. So but but this but this is the outflow of, of the past that is coming out in order to be to be, you know, cleaned. It, it's come. It's being unearthed. It's being revealed. So it, it, this a lot of a lot of this Aquarian energy is, is going to do that. You know, Saturn and, and Pluto, excuse me, Saturn and Jupiter. We know them. That this is this is the, the the growth process. We know it as the economic cycles, but it's also our own personal growth cycle. It's 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 the you know Jupiter is is the twelve year chapters of our lives, and the Jupiter Saturn uh, cycle is is the chapters of our of our lives collectively, and so we're we're going through this 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 next chapter. We're starting a whole new chapter of who we are, both as individuals and as a society. Um, and uh, at, at the core of it, you know, Jupiter and Saturn and Pluto have been squaring errors. You know, I've been talking about this, you know, for the last three years. I know. That's why I, yeah, I was just going to mention that because we have only a couple minutes left. And I know that's that's a, a topic. You spoke on it on my show for anyone who wants to look back. I don't remember exact the date, but maybe six months ago or so or a little more. Um, about the exact uh, Pluto era square. Very interesting. You gave a lot of historical data there's and you had two, given a, a webinar on it. So um, go ahead. There's, there's two more this year. Saturn squares Eris every 30 years. Um, right. It, it's, it's squared, it's Saturn exactly. and Capricorn squared Eris in, in Aries in, in 1959, in 1989. 
Oh, and now it's back again. But this, but the Pluto in Capricorn to Eris Square has not occurred since 691 BCE, since the Axial Age, since Buddha and Homer and Pythagoras and Lao Tse walked on the planet, since the great thought streams of Western civilization came on the planet. This is the the the, the this is the magnitude of the time frame that we're passing through, Sherry. It, it's mm -hmm. it's it's bigger than any of us can really encompass. Um, and on top of it, we're, we're in the midst that, you know, I use the, the declaration of war U.S. chart that was 1775, not 1776. I won't go into the details now, but we're, from my perspective, we are already in the throes of the Pluto return and the Neptune opposition, uh, which occurred at the American Revolution and the, and the Civil War. Right. Our, our history is coming back to be healed and to move us forward again. Um, we're, we are in a tremendous growth cycle, which which is we've, we 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 signed we all signed on to be here, you know. I right, know. right, right. Well, that's the interesting part, right? As I get older, I'm like, you know, cross me off the list. I think, can I just like hibernate for the next twenty years? I mean, I'll do my, I, you know, I'll 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 be a good person. I'll wear my mask. I'll 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 love children and grandchildren, and you know stray pets and you know whatever and donate to causes but but you know i i, I think the young people uh, <laughs> they really have quite a road ahead of them you know but they, but they were you know my grand my granddaughter's five years old she'll be five in, in next week and i think about it you know she was born with uranus square pluto um, yeah it, it, it's like but but they came in equipped to deal with it they don't know it yet but, right. but, they, but they came in with everything they need. Um, I, I like to say that this, the, the Pluto and Capricorn generation is going to build Eckhart Tolle's new Earth. That's what we're seeing evolve here. But, but we have to have these earthquakes and volcanoes, you know, physically in the Earth itself, the climate change. The Earth is changing. It's not just us. The entire Earth itself is changing. And right. we are we are part of that ecosystem. That's all one unit. You can't separate us from the Earth, and you can't separate. We know as astrologers, you can't separate the Earth from 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 all the celestial bodies that surround it. It's all one big Megillah. Okay. Right. Right. <laughs> I don't know what other word to use. It's so, all Michigas that needs all, to be sorted right, out. <laughs> right. Right. So exactly. you know, we, we're 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 swimming through this and. We're, we're all learning to navigate it. We're, we, 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 we came in consciously, we came in unconsciously or consciously to be here to do the work that needed to be done. And so we're, we're going to make it. We're going to survive. We're going to see our way through. But, you know, nobody promised us a rose garden. It, it's, uh, you know, this is an earth. This is a soul school. We came here to learn. Our soul sent us down as, as its agent to learn ab about itself. Oh, right, it, gotcha, gotcha. Right, right. Listen, Daniel, wonderful interview. And I'm only cutting you off because we have about three minutes left. And I want to make sure that you have time to give out your contact information, tell people what you're up to, if you've got any upcoming classes or webinars or lectures or how they could book a reading with you, all that good stuff. All right. Well, I, 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 have, to, I have to say that I wrote more books this year than I bought. Okay. I, I, <laughs> Early in the year, I wrote well, a book. Now we I, know how you used your pandemic time, don't we? <laughs> exactly. Um, I'm, I'm, and, and, and I have to thank you because you 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 helped me, you know, very, you know, in, in an important way through one of them. Um, but you know, it, I wrote Perspective on EA, which is a series of essays about the inner and outer planets from an evolutionary astrology perspective. Um, and I also wrote a book called America at the Crossroads which it, in details my analysis um, in, in view of the, the uh, 29, uh, excuse me, the 2020 election of this, this uh, declaration of war chart from July uh, 6th of 1775 that I've been talking about. Um, and I, right now I- What's the time on that, um, Daniel, and the location? The, the time is 11.03 um, a.m. and it's Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Okay. Uh, it's, it's it's a zero Libra rising chart, um, and and uh, most recently I've I've written a, a detailed forecast of 2021, um, which is detailed with, with excruciating detail for the astrologer, 
but there's a there's a narrative, uh, a, a, an easy to read narrative also for the lay reader. So and where do people find these? They're they're all on Amazon. Oh, okay, cool. All on Amazon. And e how can e people e contact e you if they want to find out what what you know when you're giving a webinar and how they can book a reading and all that stuff? Yeah, I, I, I speak monthly. I give forecasts monthly on the EA Zoom meetings on Facebook. Um, my email address is daniel at the number four evolutionary astrology dot com, which is also my website uh, for evolutionary astrology dot com. Excellent. All right. Thank you again. I've really enjoyed this conversation. It's always great talking to you. So let's do it again. All right. We'll we'll find another date in the future. Um, but meanwhile, thank you, Daniel, for being on the show and sharing your wisdom with us. And thanks to everyone else for joining us. I hope you found the information presented here helpful as you continue your karmic evolution in this lifetime. Please to be sure to join me next week on February 4th for another episode of Karmic Evolutions, Astrologically Speaking, when I think I'm going to take a deep dive into Mercury retrograde and the air cycles this year as well as look at some of the upcoming um, eclipses in May and June, because um, the influence of the solar eclipse in June is going to start, well, it actually, I think, has already started. So I'd like to um, inform people about that, and, uh, you know, let's not miss the opportunity to become conscious while things are actually happening, right? So I hope I will see you next week. Until then, may your journey be filled with karmic healing and the joy of greater consciousness. Namaste. Long ago, before this day's confusion did begin. Throughout the stars did we go wandering. Distance was no barrier. And time it had no hope Free to come And free to go Free to come And free to go Open up the